Good afternoon, everybody. How we doing? Yeah, we doing good? Y'all still with me? Yeah, word. Um, so my name is Issa. I'm a poet. Um, and I did meet Climate One at COP21. Um, and basically, they asked uh, both myself and my sister, Teresa Siangatonu, who will be coming later, um, to share poetry and to share stories about how our communities have been um, affected and displaced by climate change. And so I would just like to remind folks that um, much to what Greg said before, we're not talking about 2100 or some far off distant future for some of our families, especially Islander communities, especially brown folks, especially people who from impoverished places places, um, this is a reality. Climate change is a reality for us right now. We are losing our islands to climate change, to global warming, to the increased intensity and frequency of natural disasters. So I'm coming to you from Oakland. I'm also coming to you from the Philippines, where my family are both survivors and victims of Super Typhoon Haiyan, locally known as Super Typhoon Yolanda. So um, I will do this poem about them. But you know, I just want to remind folks that, yes, um, these conversations are very important, um, but it's also important to recognize that there are communities who don't have the language to say what climate change is um, or to identify it. Like in Warai, which is my local dialect, I don't, I can't just, um, I can't just translate climate change or global warming to my auntie or to my cousins um, and explain it. But they know what it is. They've lost their family members. They've lost their homes to this, right? So this poem is dedicated to my mother. I wonder if my mother can still see the bodies when she stares into sea. November 8, 2013, Super Typhoon Yolanda was the strongest storm to ever make landfall in the recorded history of the world. Mama tells nightmares of how ocean swallowed her town whole. Foam water rammed into house, snapped off metal locks and flooded the doors open. It's like the winds were searching for me today. When I arrive in Tanawan one month after the typhoon, I do not recognize my mother's home. Roofs crumpled like bald paper. The basketball court where I spent each childhood morning is now an unmarked mass grave. 13 holes for over 600 bodies. My homeland is a country of islands drowning in the U.S. ocean. When I, retu when I return to the U.S., politicians label climate change a myth. Deny our existence as if natural disasters only count when there are white bodies to bury. Each year, an average of 20 typhoons hit the Philippines, and my tita tells me God is punishing us. How else can you explain storm surge waves taller than coconut trees, five corpses stuffed into one body bag, names of entire families scribbled onto debris made crosses at the traffic circle turned mass grave? We people, born from ocean, now fear the sea that stole our families. This is not the problem of the Philippines, of the Pacific Islands, of Oceania, long after the news reports. When the next super typhoon has blown away my family's relief tents, we will still be standing. In sea salt flooded rice fields, brown fisher folk demanding, do not turn away from the disasters yet to come. Our islands are in your hands. These spirits sing a warning. Andagat gugotom lagihap. The sea that feeds us will one day grow hungry again. Thank you. <laughs> 